todo este desborde tiene que ver con lo que uno va acumulando de cosas y cosas y cosas injustas y, a, y señalar a los árbitros y decir que las canchas están perfectas y, y todas las mentiras que han dicho acá y hacer conferencia de prensa para decir no, las canchas están perfectas y vos ves que las uniones eh, no, no justifican. No, los campos de entrenamiento están perfectos y Bolivia no entrenó y, y yo tengo todas las fotos que justifican que son todas mentiras. Esto es una plaga de mentirosos. For me, this tur tournament has not been professional for me. Certainly, we wouldn't want anyone's families or any players' families to be put in harm's way. But I know if, if Team Canada, if our team would have responded like this, that there would be heavy sanctions. We've had our players be headbutted. We've had racial slurs thrown at our players live and, and through social media. Um, we've been treated like second-class citizens. And in the entire time, I've challenged our team to stay disciplined. We're back on Football Americas, joined again by our good friend and colleague Alejandro Moreno. We were just listening there to the managers of Canada and Uruguay, Marcelo Bielsa and Jesse Marsh, respectively, who had some pretty harsh criticisms for the organizers here of Copa America. Now, we know that there's been issues throughout the tournament, but it all came to a head before the final in Miami. Shaka, what was your reaction to kind of the scenes we saw pregame where uh, it looked like we had a little bit of a repeat of what we saw in the last European final at Wembley where security mm -hmm. forces basically... Uh, were overtaken by fans, some with tickets and some clearly without. Look, I, I, I'm a huge fan of the Copa Americas. I think it's an incredible tournament. I think the football we've witnessed over the last few weeks um, has mirrored what, what you expect from, from Copa America in terms of on-the-field play. I just feel that there have been mounting complaints about a lot of the off-field aspects of it. Security detail be was a concern with Colombia, Uruguay. You know what how many fans are uh, Colombia bring whenever, whenever they play. Um, and, and still, the stadium, the organizers, the facilities were overwhelmed, and you have to assume, caught off guards by it. And given, given what this tournament promises to be, given the significance of it regionally, particularly to those in South America, I just feel football and football fans deserve a whole lot more than what they got all tournament long off the pitch. On the pitch, that's a different discussion, but certainly off the pitch, I, I feel um, that there were hard lessons to be learned. The final was delayed by 82 minutes. I have to say, based on what we saw coming in on social media, I'm surprised they played at all. What did you make of it? I, I can't believe they played. This was any other event, a, a basketball game, a football game. Here in the States, authorities wouldn't have allowed this game mm -hmm. to continue. This would have been called off. This is an embarrassment. Now, I know this is a Comnebol run tournament. I understand that. This is why, and this is ridiculous what we're seeing. They're, they're getting through the air vents mm -hmm. here. This Comnebol tournament is being ran because in 2016, Comnebol, when U.S. soccer ran it, saw how much money they left on the table. Look at all that money that we lost. We're not allowing this, this go around. So U.S. soccer, CONCACAF, allowed Comnebol to come into their country, to their territory, and run a tournament when they weren't capacitated to do it. And I ask, how much money is worth compromising the health and well-being of your players? Because the fields that we saw, the conditions, and your fans, the people in these tournaments with security issues, the gates, these type of things. How much does it take for you to realize that this was a bad idea? You cannot allow another organization to come in and cut corners. Because they can keep telling us it's Comnebol, it's Comnebol, it's Comnebol. At the end of the day, this is your territory. And if you're going to allow these things to happen in your territory, you've got to make sure this doesn't happen. This is an international embarrassment. The optics are here are what are really, really disturbing. It's a Comnebol event. Obviously, uh, U.S. Soccer and CONCACAF have some final approval. I wonder if moving forward they might be a little slower to give that final approval mm. based on what we've seen uh, so far. I mean, they were really horrifying, worrisome images pregame, weren't they? Chris? Well, it was, and I think... It they know about these situations because in the World Cup in Brazil, they had a situation in, 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 the, in the group stage where Maracanã was something very similar to this happened and people broke in. And then FIFA implemented these, these zones around the stadium where you had multiple checkpoints to get in. So you didn't have these rushes at the door. There was multiple zones you had to go through. So then you weren't all piled into one spot and people without tickets 
couldn't get through those earlier zones. So then that led when you went to the tickets, you didn't have that onrush of people. So really, really unbelievably understaffed from law enforcement, from security, from across the board. And I think what we're really just happy that we haven't heard was that with knowing that there was thousands of fans in that stadium that did not go through security checks, that did not uh, have tickets, that there wasn't an, a, a larger incident that happened. That's the only bright side of this whole debacle that that this uh, situation unfolded for the final. Ale, what's your biggest disappointment in all of this? Yeah, points taken that everybody has brought up in the panel. And look, I, I, I see exactly what they're saying and what they're talking about. But I, I'm just going to focus on what happened in Charlotte between Colombia and Uruguay and how that should have served as a stern warning to the final, in this case, in Miami and Hard Rock Stadium. And the security not only in the stadium, but the security around the stadium and the police presence around the stadium. If you are not paying attention to what just happened a few days ago, and you don't make the necessary corrections and the necessary adjustments to the way that you're going to protect the sanctity of this event, then regardless of whether this is Comebol or Miami-Dade police or the security detail inside the stadium, they all have a part in this. Because if you know that a big event is coming to your town, to your stadium, and that is within your jurisdiction, you should be able to address it accordingly and not react by the time that people are getting into the ventilation system mm. or by the time that you're getting overrun. It's too late by then. It's too late by then. And I'm not in any way excusing the behavior of the fans because it's embarrassing. Embarrassing to see what some of these fans were doing. And my hearts go out to the fans that actually bought tickets and couldn't get into the stadium. So they spent thousands of dollars. Who knows how much money flying into Miami and who knows how much money in buying the tickets. And there they are sitting outside of the stadium while there are people inside the stadium that did not pay. And this all goes back to your inability, whoever, because the, the, the blame goes around equally everywhere, everywhere. Comeball and everybody that has to do with the security of this stadium and everybody outside of the stadium and everybody inside of the stadium, they all have blame to share everywhere. It is an embarrassing look to everybody. But if you've seen it, if you've seen it in Charlotte, you've seen it, that is a problem. And we already discussed it. And we had a segment about it. Obviously, they're not watching our show. <laughs> Obviously, they're not watching the segment. Obviously, they're not watching the criticism. Obviously, they're not paying attention because it's too late to try to react once people have taken over. This should have been handled completely differently. And, and, and I'm not just saying that now. We were saying this following the Colombia-Uruguay match. We were having that very same conversation. Hey, the final's coming to Miami. It's Colombia. It's Argentina. It's passion. It's tense. It's energy. You better make sure that you're taking the steps that are necessary. And did they listen? No, they didn't listen. Oh, yeah, we're going to be understaffed. Oh, we're going to be overtaken by people. That should never have been a possibility. It was. People took advantage of it. And people that actually have bought tickets were standing outside and others that snuck into the stadium were watching the final. Ale, as always, great perspective, a sad, sad end to what has been a wonderful tournament uh, so far here in the United States.